Hi, I'm Paul Girada from Catalyst Resources. Today we're going to spend some time talking about what I feel is a fascinating topic around designing for mission critical software. Now, before we get started, let's go ahead and define what we mean by mission critical. Mission critical software normally has three characteristics. One is you could have identical actions and get different results. For example, you could run the same diagnostic test on two patients and get entirely, entirely different results. You could buy 100 shares of Google stock on different days and get entirely different results. Another characteristic of mission critical is human life and welfare at risk. And the third one is typically there's significant financial impact or risk. Now, the approach we're going to take today is we're going to look at design principles for mission critical software around some human behavior models that are very common and prevalent in emergency and disaster response situations. So what happens to people, to the brain, in high stress situations? Humans behave in a fight or flight mode. And there is a small part of the brilliant brain, the hypothalamus, that's about the size of an almond, that is responsible for triggering these fight or flight or freeze modalities. They block or slow learning, they reduce teamwork, they reduce change, they help people understand if they are safe. And what happens is there is a proven behavior model that people work through in an emergency or high stress situation. It's called the survival arc. It's got four different stages to it. Detection, disbelief, deliberation, and action. And the principles that we're going to talk about today occur at each one of those points. Now, detection. In the financial services area and the healthcare area, lots of situations where things need to be detected. And the approach we like to take in the software is to de have predefined ways to detect it. Here's an example. This is a trading system used at Citibank. And Citibank has many trading floors you could see on the left-hand side. And in New York, at the Park Avenue trading floor, and in front room C, you could see that there is a trader here who has an issue. This is predefined. They know what's going to happen. People know to look at this screen, and they know how the screen's going to work. And it signals those events and alerts um, early um, so that people can respond to them. Now, the second thing that happens in the survival arc phase is there's, there's a phase of disbelief. For example, in 9-11, many people thought, oh, it couldn't have been an, a, a large airplane. It had to be a small airplane that hit the building. And then it wasn't until, until there was a second uh, big explosion that people said, well, no, the idea of a small airplane doesn't make sense. So how do you deal with this disbelief phase? The approach that we would recommend is that you characterize the events in multiple modalities. In other words, in almost any situation, you can't characterize things by one thing. You can't listen to a person's heart and, and call it a conclusive a determination of that event. You normally look at multiple modalities. You might hear, you might look at an MRI, you might feel for something, you might refer to somebody, but you use multiple modalities to characterize the uh, situation so that people get an accurate understanding of it. Now let me show you an example of that software. Here's an example of a piece of software that might be hard to believe. This manages about 8% of the U.S. gasoline supply the ordering and distribution of it. Now, if you're a textual learner and you can read very quickly and do math in your head, you're in good shape. And these were originally used by very highly skilled people. Now, when the software was redesigned to be more accessible by people that didn't have such high skill levels, we used this approach in multiple modalities. So there were alerts that sounded when, when um, uh, a tank needed to be refilled. We presented the, the numerical information so that people knew what to do and we highlighted exactly where it was. We also gave them a visual indication of exactly what the fluid level was in the tank so that people could quickly characterize the situation and either place an order by filling in some numbers if that worked well for them or they could just grab this bar and drag it up to the appropriate level. Deliberation. Deliberation is the third phase. It's a key phase. In times like 9-11 or Sandy, people deliberate. They either There are two things that happen. They're deliberating on what their plan of action is, and they're deliberating for a certain period of time. The successful people deliberate and come up with the right amount of time, and they deliberate in the right, in the right length of time.
Deliberation is the one phase where collaboration normally is key. In 9-11, about 66% of the people who survived talked to two or more people as they were determining what they want to do. So in this phase, what we want to encourage in our software is collaboration. Here's an example of a mission critical piece of software. It's evaluating tissue samples and on the so you're looking at a breast sample and on the left hand side is a stained tissue sample. Those dark spots are uh, potential areas of cancerous cells. Now we in the software you've got a pathologist and a radiologist and an oncologist who can contemplate and collaborate on what the plan of action is. Action. Keep in mind that when you've got, when you have software that is addressing mission critical situations, people's learning is slowed. They need predictability. They need to have something that's easy to do. So how can you do that? One of the ways to do it is to use real world models that people relate to. Somebody who's working on a pipeline relates to what they're seeing there. And what you see in the upper right hand corner is some of the physics calculations used to determine where in this pipeline there might be a leak. And if there's a leak that occurs because of the accumulation of water or sediment, it's probably going to be a $100 million a day expense before you deal with the environmental protection issues. However, very few people are going to be able to relate to that mathematics. So when we design the software, we designed it so that the physics and the calculations were modeled around what the pipeline really looked at. And the reason we did this is because we could have a large number of people who look at it and say, oh yeah, I know exactly where that section of pipe is, pipe number three. I know where heater number one is. I know where the cooler is. And they could bring forward previously patterned expertise that they could immediately put to work. So effectively, they were already trained to use this and it was much more simplified. So the survival arc is one of many ways, one of many tools you could use to design mission critical software. If you've got a mission critical piece of software, you'd like to learn more about it, feel free to give us a call. Thanks very much.